Hey guys, Josh here with Living Dead Paranormal. If you guys haven't yet, please take a moment and subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. We often upload pretty frequently, so that way you don't miss any episodes. So over the years, I've had several fans of the shows ask us to do like review videos and talk about some of our most memorable cases. So I've got some downtime here and thought I would look back at a few of our scary cases we've done over the years and just cases in general that kind of stuck with us. So I'm going to watch these with you and kind of give you a firsthand look at kind of our thought process as we're investigating these locations. And today I'm going to review and talk about Willow's Weep. This is a case we did back in 2014. I believe at the time Willow's Weep was fairly new to the paranormal scene and the original owner, Brenda, had contacted my brothers and I to come out and investigate the house and see what we could document. So we'll dive into the video here. It is a very creepy house. Um, if you look at it from the top view, it's actually the shape of an up -down crawl, upside down cross, I guess depending on how you look at it. But definitely a creepy house. It's not a super large location, but um, I'll dive in here. You'll see it's very creepy. Eugene is a small knit community. I've had the house for about four and a half years. That was Brenda, the owner of the house. You can see we investigated this like in the middle of the winter time. So I believe it was like seven degrees inside the house, extremely cold. I get chills just looking at the outside of the house. Now there's a lot of history. If you guys want to go back and look, there's a lot of history tied to the Willows tree, which sits out front. Um, that's kind of where the house got its name. There have been people who have touched the tree and supposedly had all these bad things happen to them, car crashes and stuff after that, after the investigation. So I don't think I would have to go back and look. I don't think any of us touched the tree, but That's the kitchen right there. That's the outside of the house. There's the willow tree. So right now we're getting ready to walk in the house. Um, earlier that day, they did have an event there. My brothers and I spoke at. So we got to meet a lot of cool people and meet a lot of other paranormal teams. So it was a pretty cool event they had during the day. And then after everybody left, we did our investigation later that night. We had our command post. There's a shed off to the side. You'll see it in one of these pictures we took. That's kind of where our command post was. It had a little bit of heat in it, but the house itself has no heat. It was actually colder inside the house than it was outside. This is us walking in for the first time. Sean. There's Rocky. That's my amazing camera skills. You don't have to be afraid of us. Do you hear that? The knock yeah. behind you. It's right behind me. Did you just knock out here? Do it again for us. Do it again for us. Definitely had a lot of knocking inside the house. I remember that. Right here. Where at? Something's locked. I don't know. I can't make out where the hell coming from. Let's just stand right here. Do you want us out of your house right now? And I think like the coldness inside the house was super creepy. And a lot of that's hard to get over the video just how creepy it is when you're standing inside there. Did you kill yourself in this house? This house sat in complete darkness for years. Is this the way you like it?
This device, if you try really hard, you can communicate with us. Were you sitting in this chair when you took your life? Was this the area of the house when you shot yourself? Now, I remember during this case, I had like four or five thermal shirts on underneath that shirt because I didn't want to wear a jacket. I just, it often screws up the audio. So, it was definitely cold. Blood. That's f***ing blood. That's f***ing blood. Now, this chair right here, now this is probably one of our most controversial cases we've ever done. And a lot of you guys that may know the history of Willow's Weep would understand. Um... But supposedly, this guy's wife had died from cancer inside the house, and he was so grief-stricken that he committed suicide in this chair. And supposedly, this was the chair that he committed suicide in that still had his blood stains on it. Now, we've had people reach out that says, that's not the original chair. We've had a lot of people research it and say that that is the original chair. So, you know, we'll kind of leave that up to you guys on your thoughts, but definitely creepy. I got enough going on in my life to set where that's his blood. Maybe because they sat in your chair like I am now. You hear it now? Uh -uh. So it took us a few minutes to convince Sean to sit in the chair and run an EVP session, but he eventually did. So if you want me out of here, hold. You feel like my freaking body just started vibrating. Keep calm. I know, just chill. I just wanted to tell you what the hell is going on with me. So if you want me out of your chair, you're going to have to walk over here and push me out of it. Living here in peace, and then your wife took her life, and you were struck down with cancer, so you ended up taking your own life. I will say that is when you sit in the chair, and I don't know if it's just subconsciously you thinking about what took place in the chair that makes it creepy, but I will say sitting in that chair, you definitely get a creepy feeling and a cold, like just cold feeling all around the chair. We are not here to condemn you. We are only here to speak with you. I mean, it is so much colder, right, when you sit in this chair. Are you making it colder in this house because we're aggravating you? You know, wouldn't that be weird that, you know, she takes the pills, commits suicide. They clearly know her spirit's here because, you know, there's stories of them seeing shadows running throughout the house. And then he commits suicide to be with her. And they're both stuck he, here. He used to see. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the kids. That's why they shut these doors. I remember at that moment I was wishing that I had my chapstick with me, especially investigating it in the winter time. Your lips get chapped, so that's kind of my thought process when I was sitting in that chair right there. Why are you still here and why haven't you moved on? You're a female. I heard like a, a voice. It was real light. We, we keep hearing you, but it's so faint we can't hear it. You've got to try something really loud for us. So after a few hours of us all three investigating the house together, we decided to go in one at a time. I went in first and we were going to investigate the house by ourselves and just see if we were able to document more evidence. 
So this is me alone inside the house. Rocky and Sean is outside the house in a shed at the command post watching. Very creepy. I swear to God, I just said I am. Say that. Was that your voice I just picked up? Could you knock on something for me? Do something to validate that you or somebody else is in this house right now. You don't have to be afraid of me or my equipment. There's nothing I can do to hurt you and none of this equipment can hurt you. So right now I'm just really trying to connect with the spirits and Can you take me back to the day that you committed me. suicide? I feel sometimes just trying to you committed suicide. Can you take me back to the day that you committed suicide? They said you had cancer and you were dying. Is that why you took your life? Now these are EVPs off the voice recorders, it's not so using the spirit box or anything. I mean, it's weird because you almost hear footsteps. Did you just knock on something? Coming too. Did you just move something back here? Show yourself right now. What in the hell was that? I was so scared. Right Stop shaking. This would be a whole lot easier. It felt like the corner of this chair, just this front, like right corner moved. And then like this door right here, this glass, that's plexiglass though. It's not like glass, but that's plexiglass. I was with six other people and we were in the living room and we asked for a sign and about two minutes later the whole entire floor lifted about seven of us <laughs> that's when i heard footsteps like charge at me from the other side of the room like it ruined my life for about three months honestly yeah it turned my whole life upside down the next day all three of them was airlifted to a hospital from a car crash can you hear me Okay, so now we sent Sean inside the house, and a lot of you guys know Sean hates being alone, but we really wanted to, especially with this investigation and it being such a small location, we really wanted to push ourselves and each one of us spend time in there. So again, we spent several minutes trying to convince Sean, but we got him to sit inside the house. Um, we do have cameras on him, so me and Rocker are able to monitor everything and, of course, walkie-talkies. Is there anybody in here with me? See how scared he is. There's a ball sitting here on the chair. Can you move it? Josh, this is freaky. Remember, no 
matter what happens, stand your ground. Yeah, I hear you. Reenact the suicide. Screw you. Remember, baby steps. Remember, you have one shot. Don't leave with regrets. If something happens, I'll be making my own doorway. Is there something you want to I, tell me? I think Sean lasted like five minutes, maybe ten. Is there something that happened that you have never told anybody? I think a freaking door just moved over there. Did you just move that door? Josh, there is something touching the back of my freaking head right now. Go again. There's something touching the back of my head right now. Are you watching the monitor? Copy, I don't see anything. Is there a reason you want to touch me right now? I just heard a frickin' door move. To your right. Nope. Straight in front of me, I think. I don't know. It sounded like it came from the other room. Alright, now it feels like somebody's touching right here on the side. Sorry, freaking doing something. You're nuts. Do you miss your wife? Are you with your wife? The f Holy sh! All right, uh, I've had enough. I'm coming out. Holy we still have no idea what that noise was. <clears throat> Do what? No, I've had enough. Just let Rocky come in here. How long was your wife dead before you found her? Believe it or not, Rocky hates being alone in a location more than Sean. I don't think he lasted as long as Sean did. You can see how scared he is. I actually hear him walking right behind me. Off the left, back in the room. Now it's off the right. You could hear walking in there. Can you move this wheelchair? That's on my left side. You don't want anything? <laughs> you about scared the hell out of me. <sighs> Looks like there's a shadow. What was that? I can't tell if what it is. Looks like it is a shadow. So this image right here that you're looking at, we had documented, and then another investigation team had sent us information on the lady that used to own the location, and we did a side-by-side -side comparison. So you guys can look at this picture and just tell me if it looks like the previous owner of the house, and if we actually documented her spirit. But that's something that we documented on, our, I believe it was our GoPro footage, this image in the mist. Pretty creepy. By the door, when you first come in, there's like a little bit of light that you can actually see coming through the door and it looks like something keeps blocking it. Can you push, grab the camera, push your way back there? 
know. I feel like neither one of them ever listened to any of my suggestions, so. I'm done. Hey, shut the camcorder off. So that's our look at Willow's Weep. It was pretty cool investigation, very scary. We have been asked to go back and investigate there. We just have not had the time here lately because we've been working with a lot of families. So if you guys would, please drop a comment below. If you like these videos, if you wanna see more, I would definitely love to do like a behind the scenes look of like Penhurst, Waverly Hills, um, some of our older investigations and even some of the family hauntings that we worked on and kind of give you guys updates. So like I said, please just take a minute, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button. That way you're notified every time we upload a new video. We wanna thank everybody on YouTube for all your support. As a lot of you guys know, we just crossed over uh, 100,000 subscribers. I think we're at 100,001. Um, so, Definitely appreciate that, and we appreciate all the support over the years following my brothers and I. So please leave a comment below if you like this. If you don't want to see any more of these videos, that's fine. You're not going to break my heart. But I just wanted to give you guys a behind-the-scenes look as far as our investigations and kind of what we were going through and experiencing as investigators. So I want to thank every, each and every one of you guys. Shout out to everybody on Patreon. We greatly appreciate your support. If you haven't yet, please check out our Patreon page. We upload a lot of amazing videos, pictures, early access. There's a Discord where people get in there and talk about paranormal stuff in the chat rooms. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Willow's Weep, check it out. You guys can go there and investigate. Like I said, Dave, Spink own, Dave Spinks owns it. So, thank you guys for watching and hopefully you guys have an amazing day.